Hi everybody, my name is Alicia and today I'm joined again in the studio by... Michael. Hello. And today we're going to be talking about bad habits in English. So these are some things that we've heard before or mistakes that native speakers and non-native speakers of English make uh, and that drive us crazy. So let us begin. You start. <laughs> What's your first thing? Um, this doesn't bug me too much until someone points it out about me and then it drives me nuts. Um, ah, yeah. Okay, once you tell someone that they say um or like too much, then every time they say it, they notice it. And it's really hard to get a thought out because these are filler words that you almost always use. Or I always use, maybe Americans always use. Mm -hmm. But it's, yeah, it's really tough not to use the word like or um, I think, when you're just speaking casually. Right. Um, yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, like... <laughs> right now see, see? why exactly. did you have to make it the first, first yeah. word why did you have to make it the first one actually we talked about that we have a video i think from probably like a year ago one of the english uh, weekly words videos where uh the word like was one of the words that americans overuse uh i don't i don't know where that information came from but um that was see oh my god now i'm suddenly aware of it right. why oh it. Yeah, just god this whole, this whole thing i'm gonna be thinking about how often i say like and um Okay, let's see. I'm going to go to one that I think all of us talked about and all of us were aware of before we even turned the camera on. But um, this, is a, this one is written. This is a written problem that drives me nuts. And there are so many variations on this with other words. But this is the big one. Your, Y-O-U-R, this is a do not equal sign. Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. So this one, your, Y-O-U-R, uh, is a possessive word. This is your shirt, your bag, your whatever. Y-O-U apostrophe R-E is a contracted form of U-R. Interestingly enough, though, I will say that I rarely see non-native speakers of English make this mistake. Most of the time, it's native speakers who make this mistake. Come on, guys. <laughs> really? I just, it just drives me nuts. Yeah, that, that one... really drives me nuts. That one bugs me, too, because it's, it's really simple. I mean, there's another one that still kind of bugs me, but I'm more forgiving, is it's and it's. Because they're both I-T-S, and one of them has an apostrophe. And in both cases, it seems reasonable, because you can use a, an apostrophe for possessive or for a contraction. Mm -hmm. So both seem reasonable. And you just have to do, like, you know, a mnemonic device, figure it out. There's rules. I'm sure there's a, you know, English language, English class 101 episode on it, you know. No but, apostrophe is the one that's the possessive. The apostrophe S is the one that's short for it has or it is. Right. But it makes sense. It's kind of tough for some people to remember. Um, you or your and your that that really upsets me. Yeah. Just because it's it's so easy. Come it's on. simple. That and uh, there we talked about this earlier oh, this, before yeah. this. The there, there, and there. Mm. The possessive T H E I R for that's their house. That's their dog. T H E R E. It's over there. And T H E Y apostrophe R E. They are. There are three different there, there, theirs sound the same, but they have different meanings and they should be spelled differently too. So come on, native speakers, get us together. Okay. All right. Next one for you. What's your next one? Ah, along the same lines of being, uh, just like correct, could of. So I think the problem with a lot of these words is, so it's supposed to be could have, mm. but when you're speaking the language, any language, you, you make it quicker and quicker and you kind of slur the words together. So like, for example, grandma or grandma, you like native speakers, you don't really say the D, you just say like grandma, grandma. And so as a kid, I thought that's how you spelled it. And I remember spelling G-R-A-M-M-A. -M -M -A. Mm -hmm. Someone told me, no, that's not it. Da -da. So could have, it makes sense why people would say could have, but it doesn't, it's not proper and you shouldn't get in the habit of doing it. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. most of these things, you can be forgiving when they're kids, but it's best to, to nip it in the bud because you know, it just becomes a bad habit. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I mean, with could have, there is a correct contracted spelled version. It's just could have, apostrophe V-E, could have. I mean, I, I would argue that it's more casual and it's perhaps not the most correct um, thing to write. I, would, I probably would just write could have. I probably wouldn't use the contracted form so much. Use of contractions will make you sound more casual. If you want to write a formal letter, you sh I, f I feel you should not use contractions. If you're writing an academic paper as well, don't use contractions. Spell it out. Spell the whole thing out. You'll sound much more formal and more, at least in my mind, more educated. All right. Uh, great. This topic is getting me all like, uh, <laughs> like yeah. 
Fancy. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna go to okay another another pronunciation issue that I feel like almost is cool now. Okay. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> this pronunciation. Okay, so I've written ax on this card, but the it's ask, A-S-K, let me ask. Okay, so this lemme, which we talked about in a previous video, which is short for let me, I've contracted it here to the very casual lemme, um, but I've used lemme here because this is, this is typically said in a very, very casual setting. Let me ask you a question. But the pronunciation of ask should not be ax. It's ask. Let me ask you a question. I want to ask you something. It's not ax. It's ask. Ask. Yeah, this one. Again, so like lemmy. Lemmy is okay. I think most people say lemmy. I think that's okay. But for some reason, ax, I think a lot of these just are not even close at all. Let me, when you say it really fast, it sounds like lemmy. Lemmy. Right? But when you say ax, it's just totally wrong. Well, it's, that it's reversing the, the consonants in the word ask. Right, it's not faster. You're not making it quicker. You're not slurring or making, you know, putting it into one little like fluid blob. Mm -hmm. It's just, you just switch the two uh, yeah. syllables. Or Similarly, two. I hear this with the word uh, asterisk as well. The little star that's on like the number eight on your keyboard or whatever, that this looking thing, it's not an asterisk or what, I don't mm. even know, it's asterisk. So, over pronunciation. So this one is kind of the opposite direction. So this whole time we've been kind of nitpicking when you use the incorrect version of a word. Um, I think overpronunciation can also be equally as damaging, but it, instead of making you look stupid, it makes you look pretentious. So for example, we don't say in English, we don't use all of the syllables with chocolate. So it's cha, like when you spell it, chocolate. Wait, chocolate, right? Mm -hmm. And so like maybe in Spanish or something like that, they would still say that like chocolate or something, whatever. But with English, we, we took it out. And so even though you still spell all of those syllables, native speakers now say chocolate, chocolate, yeah. or like comfortable, comfortable. That's how it's spelled. But native English speakers, we say comfortable. Mm. Um, and this is like, now it's, it's, I think it's like unanimous. So maybe when it becomes, when slang becomes so popular that it's part of the new language, it's the language has now evolved. If you don't go with the flow, even though it's incorrect, I think you sound pretentious. That's a great one. I like that a lot. All right, uh, I'm gonna wrap it up. I have two actually. I'll just, I think I can do them quickly though. Do you have any more by the way? No? No. Okay, then I'll go quickly. Um, these are two, the, my last two are just a couple that my students actually struggle with, um, so maybe this, this is something that you can work on as well. Um, this one, uh, just an example sentence, I want to go to there, I've underlined the word to here. Um, we use the word to when we're uh, talking about a specific city or a specific country, like I want to go to New York, I want to go to Europe, uh, but there is not a specific location, I want to go to there. Uh, is is not a specific place, so we you don't need to use to in this sentence. I want to go there is perfectly fine. So this is a mistake that um, non-native speakers, it seems, seem to make from time to time, um, perhaps. Okay, uh, and then another one that I've heard a lot recently is this phrase, uh, in case of, and then a country. Uh, so for example, in case of China, in case of Egypt, or whatever, uh, where someone is trying to explain like the political situation or a policy in that country, uh, in case of, in case of. Um, but actually, you don't need to use case of, just in China, in Europe, in Japan, whatever. You don't need to use case of. This pattern, in case of, is used for like an emergency situation or used uh, to talk about alternate plans often to, to do with weather. So for example, in case of rain, the event will be canceled. Or in case of tornado, please go to your nearest evacuation center. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. So it's used for like an emergency situation. It's not used to talk about policies in the country. It's just used in plus the place. It's much better, much more natural. So those are a few things that I've noticed that non-native speakers uh, struggle with sometimes. So. Perhaps they'll be helpful for you as well. So thanks very much for watching. If you have a bad habit that you've noticed when you're speaking English or uh, if you've noticed a bad habit in somebody else uh, in their English speaking or their writing or whatever, please leave it in a comment. Uh, let's compare. It might be interesting to see if there are any other things that people tend to struggle with. Thanks very much for watching this episode and we will see you again soon. Bye.